Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you all to the worship this morning. I'm Reverend Lucille Fritz of the Huntington Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, here in Shelton, Connecticut, where no matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are more than welcome here. Just an announcement, next week is our in-gathering Sunday, the culmination of our season of generosity. I'll be talking a little bit more about that later in the service. So let's just take a moment and close our eyes and take some nice deep breaths as we center ourselves in God. Breathe in the love of God and breathe out hate. Breathe in the peace of God and breathe out discord. Breathe in the hope of God and breathe out despair. Breathe deeply. Feel the presence of God in you, through you, and around you. Sunrises, offering us new possibilities. May we find possibilities in all the situations in which we find ourselves. The day dawns, offering us new hope. May we find new reasons to rejoice in all God's blessings, large or small. Time moves on, offering us new ways to serve. May, May we find inspiration in this time, in this place.
scripture reading today comes from the 15th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, reading the first 10 verses. Listen for the word of God. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to hear and listen to Jesus. And Pharisees and scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels, of God over one sinner who repents. May God have a blessing to the hearing and reading of his holy words. Let us pray. <clears throat> Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We've heard this message many, many times, I'm sure, over the years. And we've probably heard all different kinds of takes on it that, okay, well, who's the sheep? The sheep are those sinners out there in the world somewhere. Sometimes the sheep are us. Who is the coin? Is it all those sinners out there, or sometimes is it us? And who is the shepherd, or who is the woman? You can take all kinds of of points of view from this scripture. And the point of view I'm taking is that we're not the sheep in this. We're the shepherd. And we are the woman. We are not the sheep in this. Or the people. But we are the shepherds and the woman. Remember what Jesus, Jesus was talking to. He was talking to people who were scoffing at him because Jesus was accepting the people that they considered unacceptable. The quote-unquote sinners, which is a code for anybody but us. That's what the code is. Anybody but us. And it's interesting that Jesus says, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. There is not anybody that needs no repentance. So Jesus is saying, you, we, are the shepherds. We are the woman. And we are to be going out and helping and accepting and loving people in this world. The people that other people other. The people that other people who are considered sinners or outcasts or undesirables. The migrants and the asylum seekers people who speak a different language, the people who worship in a different way, the people whose skin is a different color, the people whose culture is different, the people who we are uncomfortable with because of their sexual orientation or their lifestyle. Those are the people that God calls us to love and to serve. We are all in need of God's love. 
We are all in need of God's forgiveness. And God, of course, is the ultimate shepherd and the ultimate woman. But God never loses us. We lose God. We forget who and whose we are. We forget that we are human, created in God's image, just like every other human. That we deserve dignity and justice in our lives, just as every other human deserves dignity and justice in their lives. And Jesus came to tell us that and to show us that. And you know it didn't go over well. You know, Jesus was a failure. When you think about it, Jesus was a failure because he was arrested and he was crucified. He was a failure in that sense. But in the ultimate sense, he was the victor because in his failure, he showed us that we are not alone. He showed us that death is not the end. He showed us that love is eternal. He showed us how to live and to work and to be in this world, even if other people think we're failures. Or other people think we're doing things wrong. Jesus came into this world to remind us of God's precious gift given to all of humanity. This creation, this world, this people. And there is no one who is not unworthy. There is no one who is not deserving of justice in their lives. And as people who call ourselves Christians, we are to work for that, not only for people who look like us and talk like us and live like us, for, but for all people. To work for justice, to live for peace, and to be loved in this world. There's too many people in our country, in our world right now, who forget that. That they spew hate, hate that they prey on our differences to cause fear and dissension. We see it all over the news. We see it all over television. And there are some people who just love it. But that is not the way of Christ. The way of Christ is love for one another. The way of Christ is love for God. The love of Christ is love for ourselves. The way of Christ is to reach out, especially to people who are different from us, that we may learn that we may grow, that we may be a force, that oppression may cease, that all people would have enough, and that our world will live in peace. This is a tall order, and most of the time we fail at it. But we still have the victory in Jesus Christ. We are given the faith and the strength to be Christ's presence in this world, how we can be. To speak words of graciousness. To offer a hand where we can help. To offer our gifts and our time and our talents, which will improve our world. That is what we are called to do. That's always what we have been called as humans to do our very conception in God. So none of us are lost. We're all found in Jesus Christ. Now let's go out and make sure that the world knows that and feels that. Amen.
one thank you that we never truly are lost in you. Even when we wander away, you still hold us tightly in your divine heart. You continue to offer us comfort and strength. You continually knock on the door of our hearts and our minds and our souls to let your word in. We are so grateful for your son, Jesus, who showed this to us who showed your deep love, not just for us, but for your whole world, and not just for the people, but for all of creation. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit that moves in us, opening us up to the possibilities of justice and peace in this world. We thank you, gracious God, for all the blessings that you give us, for all the love with which you surround us, and our friends, and our family, the people who love us and support us, and the people who teach us and challenge us and urge us to grow and to open ourselves up to the world around us. We are so grateful for birthdays and anniversaries. We are so grateful for times together and times to celebrate, but we're also grateful for those times when we can be silent and alone to hear your still, small voice speaking to us. And gracious God, we are so grateful that we can come to you anytime with the prayers of our hearts and the prayers of our lips words that we can never possibly utter, or screams that reach out into the sky. So we do offer our prayers, gracious God, for the people we care about, and for the people that we do not even know. Prayers for comfort. Prayers for healing in body, in mind. Prayers for compassion. Prayers for the easing of our burdens. Prayers for those whose hearts are so hardened that all they can be is cruel and heartless. Prayers for folks who are fighting for their lives, for justice. Prayers for those who are in the midst of violence, whether it be in their own home, or whether it be in the battlefields of the Ukraine. Prayers for all of us, gracious God, all of us, who are in constant need of your love, your strength, your comfort. Help us to continue to be conduits of Christ in whatever way we can, with our time, our talents, our treasures. Help us to make life a little easier for somebody else. And help us to be loved in this world, a love that works for justice, a love that yearns and works for peace. So may your Holy Spirit continue to fill us as individuals, but also as your church here. Help us to be your light and your love in this community and to make a difference for good. For we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
we've had a number of people offering their thoughts, and we have one today and for one next week, and today is from Dan Oliva. My mother used to walk my sisters and myself to church on Sunday. <coughs> she would stand at the door as we walked in. In those times, she said she could not come in because she had married a divorced man, my father. As I grew older, I went to catechism classes and was taught, who made you? And the reply was always, God made me. And the question was, why did God make you? The answer was, because he loved me. Then I developed into my sexuality, and that was no longer the case in the church I grew up in. Trying for many years in different churches, I was always made ashamed of who I was, even though God made me. And there was little warmth to be found. I had found the Congregational United Church of Christ, first in New Haven, then in my own backyard, Huntington Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. I found a religious home who inspired me, a place with a wonderful pastor who teaches the love of Jesus, a congregation who has open arms to welcome everyone. This church is a community to participate in and to feel at home, a church where everyone has value and where God is still speaking to each of us. I am grateful, and we are grateful to you for being here. So what HCC means to me, it means a lot to all kinds of different people in many different ways, and we are grateful for the continuing support of people from 220, 298 years ago, and people right here and right now. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are thankful for the acceptance you give us all. And we thank you for this church. Thank you for the gifts, the time, and the talents and treasures that we can offer this place and you to continue to be your beacon of love and light here and beyond. In Christ's name we pray.
and justice. And may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you.